Okay, so obviously we're going to be talking about inequalities uh, in this video, and hopefully uh, that's clear to you because this is what these things are. These are inequality symbols, and uh, I have a little question here is how well do you really know these inequality symbols? Now, most of you out there are like, yeah, yeah, I know what these things mean, you know, but a lot of uh, people kind of forget or confuse uh, the less than or greater than symbols. They'll be like, which one is which? You know, I, you know, they get a little confused about these things. So I want to put together this quick video just to do a quick refresher and clear up any confusion some of you may have on inequality symbols. And we'll touch about we'll touch on a couple other uh, very important things when it comes to inequalities. But inequalities are extremely important in uh, all levels of mathematics, whether it's uh, basic math, algebra, or beyond. you got to understand this stuff. And it's not difficult. And if you uh, are not quite sure, you know, uh, first of all, I would suggest you pause the video and ask yourself, which, you know, what are these symbols? You know, what are the name of these symbols? What do they mean? And then um, just kind of maybe check your current understanding. That's just a recommendation. You don't have to do that. But if you kind of want to play along, I think that's a good idea. But I'm going to clear up any confusion here in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over uh, several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Um, of course, you uh, you know you have to be the judge of that. That's a pretty bold statement. You can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses, ranging from pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here very shortly. Very excited about that. But I also do a lot in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, high set task, uh, CLEP exam, AccuPlace, or Alex maybe a teacher certification exam, maybe the SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, uh, all those exams have a lot of math on them. And if you don't do well in the math sections, you don't do well on the exams. So I can definitely help you out. Just go to my website, check out my full course catalog. Um, now, if my, uh, the exam you're studying is not there, just drop me a line and I will help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning program. And then obviously help those of you that are struggling in your current math courses. Now, one thing I cannot do for you that you must do if you're serious about doing well in math, and that is the following. You got to take great math notes. So over decades of teaching mathematics, it's apparent to me crystal clear that those students who take excellent notes almost do, you know, like miraculously very well on their test. And the reverse is true. Those students who like to uh, look at their cell phone, talk to their buddies, uh, their friends in class, and do homework for another class in class. Now, how would I know this? Well, as a teacher, you pretty much see everything. So if you think you're hiding stuff from the teacher, mm, you're really not. But um, here's what I'm uh, getting at. You know, uh, no, mo a lot of students are distracted. I was uh, completely distracted in school, so I get it. You're going to have to fight off that distraction uh, to remain highly focused when you're learning math. Okay, and the only way to do that that I know of that seems effective is to be completely engaged and committed to taking great math notes. You're paying attention to the teacher. You're writing everything down. If you do that, you're going to do very, very well in your math courses. Now, in the meantime, as you're improving in your note-taking, I offer uh, detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, so let's get into this uh, quick uh, review on inequality symbols. So, uh, you should ask yourself, what is this one, what's that one, this one, and this one, and this one. And with that being said, let's get right to it. Okay, what are these symbols? Okay, so most of you probably know or are familiar with like less than, right? You have like less than, you have uh, greater, uh, greater than is another one. Well, greater than I can't even spell, but you get the idea, right? So, what, what? First of all, what is an inequality? Well, it's different than an equation. Okay, now if I have three, I'm gonna say three is exactly equal to three. I'm equating this. Good way to think about it is a, this being kind of like on a balance scale, okay, or teeter totter, or a seesaw, depending on what part of the country uh, you grew up in. But this is like a perfect balance. Okay. Well, an inequality is different. What would our seesaw look like this? If I give you the numbers 4 and uh, 2, where would the 4 go and where would the 2 go if my seesaw or my teeter-totter was to look like this? Well, hopefully most of you are saying, oh, the 4 would be here. It's kind of like 
heavier or whatnot, and the two would be up here, okay? It's like lighter, right? So that's exactly correct, okay? So two, or this four is greater than this two, or two is less than this four. So this is, you know, basically a representation of, um, of what we're talking about inequalities. We're talking about things that are not the same, okay? That's what this topic is, and this is everywhere in mathematics. So let's go ahead and uh, get to this first symbol, and let's just, when do we use this symbol? What is this called? Well, notice this symbol looks like an L, it looks like a slanted L, it looks like this L, and someone kind of squished it like this. So this right here, this one is the less than, okay? This is less than. And if you got that right, then I must give you a little, little happy face right there. You're on the right uh, track. Okay, so this is less than. So if that's less than, well, then what's uh, this one? Well, hopefully you said greater, greater than. Okay, that is correct. All right, so I'll give you a little check mark there if you got that right. Less than and greater than. So now let's move over here. What's this one? This one is the what? This is the less than or equal to. Okay, less than or equal to. So effectively, this symbol is a combination of the less than plus the equal sign. Okay, less than plus the equal sign. And we'll take a look at, uh, at some examples at all of these here in just one second. Um, so this is what? Greater than or equal to. And this is not equal to. This is not equal to. So for example, 3 is not equal to 7. Okay. So that's how we uh, use that particular. Now, this is, in fact, not an inequality symbol per se, but um, I wanted to throw it up there. Okay, so now let's take a look at how um, each one of these would be uh, kind of applied in some uh, basic problems. So let's just take some values, and we'll kind of play around with this so we get the main idea. All right, so let's start with this less than. Let's use that symbol. All right, so 3 is what? Well, it's less than what? Well, pick a number, any number that uh, 3 is less than. How about 10? That's fine. So this is true. 3 is, in fact, less than 10. So that's one uh, way we could, uh, you know, use that symbol. Okay? Pretty straightforward stuff. How about this one, greater than? Well, let's see here. 5 is greater than 2. All right? So that's one way we could state that. Now let's use this symbol. Okay? Less than or equal to. Uh, let's go back to this guy right here. 3 is less than 10. What if I put 10 is less than or equal to 10? Is that true? And by the way, what we're trying to ask ourselves is if these are in fact uh, proper statements, if they're uh, true statements. Because if I wrote here like uh, 12 is less than 10, all right, if you turn that in, you know, obviously this is incorrect. This is false. So, you know, you just don't, you know, reuse a symbol. It's got to be correct, right, in terms of uh, uh, what's going on. The left-hand side of this value here has to be less. Matter of fact, let's talk about the less than symbol right now a little bit more. So here is the less than symbol. Okay, it looks like an L. But I also uh, like to teach us, it looks like a little alligator's mouth right here. Here's the teeth, like so. And the alligator likes to eat uh, the bigger uh, value. Okay, so if that helps, see the alligator over here, it's like, mm, I'm gonna go for that 10. I'm not going to eat that little three because it's a nice little juicy 10 here. I'm going to go for that. Okay. So that's one way to kind of remember uh, the less than symbol. But uh, this is a true statement. This is true. This is, in fact, uh, true. And this one here, less than or equal to, is true as well because 10 is 10 less than 10? No, but, it's all, but it is equal to. Okay. Uh, so this is, in fact, true. All right. So we can do the same thing with the greater than. How about uh, let's uh, let's use um, let's say this 12 is greater than or equal to. Well, we can also have it like this 8. OK, so 12 is greater than or equal to 8. That's true. OK, because 12 is greater than 8. But this is also true. 12 is greater than or equal to 12. OK, again, that little equal sign in there. That's important. So if you were confu confused about when, uh, you know, what the meaning of this is, hopefully this has cleared up that confusion. And then again, not equal to, so three is not equal to seven. So this is pretty much the basic, um, you know, inequality symbols that you're going to be using, but you're not, you're going to be using them with numbers, but you're also going to be using them in algebra, right? So you can have things like 
A plus B is greater than C. You know, these things have meanings, okay? And so uh, if you're, you know, whatever particular math you're in, if you're not in algebra yet, you know, you'll, you, you'll be seeing inequalities. And inequalities is a big topic. And we can get into graphing inequalities on number lines. Uh, let's say something like this. Here's zero. Here's three. Little open circle here. This is all the numbers X that are greater than three. Okay, we would represent this graphically, but this is a whole uh, additional topic beyond this uh, um, this topic here because I just wanted to review the basic inequality symbols. But again, we're you know talking about the topic of inequalities. By the way, um, all this stuff here on how to graph uh, inequalities and solve inequalities, all that kind of stuff, you can find additional videos on this material on my YouTube channel in my algebra and pre-algebra playlist. Of course, if you really, really want to know this stuff, I would suggest maybe uh, signing up for my algebra course. Okay, so um, hopefully this cleared up any confusion that you might have had about inequality symbols. And if that is the case, please don't be confused about smashing that like button. That definitely uh, helps me out. And uh, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for well over 10 years. I have over a thousand videos all there for you to take advantage of okay my passion is to, is to clear us uh, to teach math in a clear and understandable way that's my goal that's what I'm always trying to do and uh, every time I make videos I make a lot of videos for YouTube they're there uh, to help you so please take advantage of them if you like my teaching style but again my best math help will be within my math help program okay so uh, with that being said I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures Thank you for your time and have a great day.